Mr. Munster, did you come here expecting to hear maybe a little bit about something else? Well, I always hope for something more. We weren't expecting it and it didn't happen, but, uh, you know, the one wild card was maybe an updated actual Apple TV, the little box. Yeah. But that was kind of the wild card. I want to talk TV in a second, but let's start with a smartwatch. There's been a lot of speculation on that front. Samsung last week had its own event to unveil its own watch. Um, the fact that Apple hasn't made a move into this market yet, is that a good thing? Is it a bad thing? It's very Apple-like, I would say. You know, it was from really the beginning of the MP3 players. They weren't first to the market, of course, with the phones. They weren't first to the market. So this is very Apple-like to be kind of a follower. In terms of the timing of that, what kind of follower? It's probably sometime in 2014. But it's pretty clear that wearable technology is something that has, Apple has an interest in, and the watch is a very logical place to go. Samsung, when it unveiled this smartwatch originally, said, hey, you can have it with all the bells and whistles if you buy our new phablet device. Do you think the rollout that way, and some skeptics said, well, they just want to get it out now so they can say they've got it out in the market. Do you think that rollout actually played into Apple's hand? The, the, the limits on how successful that product can be short term? Yeah, I, I think initially the wearable technology category is probably going to be a tethered category in general. So I think that that's going to limit, I think, some of the opportunity to answer it maybe a slightly different way. So to think about this is just, you know, you're going to have to still have an iPhone to use your iWatch. Talk television. So you, you hinted off the top what we could have heard. Give us more detail on what maybe Apple might be telling us about in the months to come. Well, this is something we've talked about for a long time. We still believe Apple's working on an actual television. We think it's going to be out sometime in 2014. And ultimately, the living room is a big opportunity for them. We didn't hear about it today, but when, you, when they talk about new product categories, like Tim Took talked about on the June conference call, we think the TV is definitely within that. Is Apple in a position to redefine the television market the way that it redefined the phone market with the introduction of the iPhone? way back when. Well, I can tell you this. When we survey consumers about that, they believe that Apple can do that. And I guess just given what they've done around the phone and other devices, I think that they are an opportunity to do that. Is what Apple is doing now, is this in any way groundwork for any of those other devices? I mean, what we look as these incremental advances in each phone, is it actually setting the stage for any other product category that Apple could be looking at? The one product category is that we talked about earlier is just the digital wallet, is that that fingerprint reader on the iPhone 5S is a gateway to doing more of a digital wallet to allow you to use your phone as a payment method and to do, so you don't have to wait in line, so you don't have to get receipts, loyalty programs. So I think that that's one of the groundwork pieces that was laid today. Not to put you on the spot, but as far as how big a market opportunity that is, not necessarily for Apple, but overall, the commerce well, area. If you think about and look at this context, is that the overall, I'm not a credit analyst, so I don't know sure. what the, the size of that market is, but probably Apple's goal would be to just get a fraction of a percent of each transaction. Right now, Visa gets 2%, so if they just get a small amount of that. Just coming back to today's announcement, I know there was another question that Emily Chang wanted to ask you, and it was when you picked up this iPhone 5C today, the lower price device, um, the headlines wondering, you know, is, is it cheap enough? Uh, did it feel like a low price product to you or a cheap product, as some people might put it? No, it felt like a, an iPhone 5 with a plastic back. So I, it didn't feel like anything, it didn't have a cheap feel to it at all. I think that they were able to put enough features in between the 5C and the 5S, so when you compare it to those two, but as it stands on its own, I think people are going to be fine with it. And you raised a good point earlier, which is if Apple executives are sitting around the boardroom table and they're thinking about the pricing for a product like that and say, hold on a second, there's maybe a possibility that we can, we can make the numbers that we want to make with this new device, pricing it where we've decided to price it today. How does that all play out? When does Apple start to say, okay, that was the right way to go? versus, you know, there's a lot of very low price devices in China and maybe we should have actually taken that next step. Hard to say because it's hard to say what the demand's going to be, but ultimately is that it took them about, if we just use what they've done in the past as kind of a, a roadmap to that, they lowered the price of the iPhone 4 in the June quarter, which was three quarters into it. And that was one of the products. So we're not talking about them lowering the price across the board, but they started to play with some of the pricing at that point. We've only got about 20 seconds left. Do you think Apple has left Samsung 
with some thinking to do after this big unveil today? And yeah, whenever Apple does something, I'm sure Samsung has a lot of thinking to do. In this case, I think Samsung's probably thinking more about biometrics and what implication that has on the digital wallet and some more higher security features on the phone over time.